When I played Digimon World Next Order five years ago, my main takeaway was that it was successful at paying nostalgic homage to the original Digimon World on the PS1, but that its uneven design brought the entire game down. Great touches like rearranged versions of classic music and thoughtful references made me happy, but hitting repeated walls of progress while playing disappointed and frustrated me. It left me pretty bummed out, and I kinda got out of Digimon for a while. Five years later, I decided to give the game another chance to see if I'd like it more. After playing it again, my main takeaway is that my criticisms from back then were still on my mind, but I had a lot more fun this time, so I wanted to give it another video on this channel to right some previous wrongs. And don't worry, if you're just trying to find out what this game is like and if it's worth throwing a few bucks down for on a sale, this video will help you a lot too. To start with the basics, Digimon World Next Order is a Unity game that serves as a direct narrative sequel to the first Digimon World game. You may be familiar with recent Digimon games like the Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth titles, which are more traditional JRPGs in their design and how they handle digital monsters. Digimon World Next Order instead takes more direct cues from the series' origins as a virtual pet, and thus its mechanics focus a bit more on actually caring for your partners. Next Order differs from the first game by having you raise two Digimon at a time, and you'll need to look after them by way of feeding them when they're hungry, giving them a warm place to sleep when they're done for the day, training stats up in a gym, and letting them have rest periods when they're fatigued from training or battling other Digimon. Now, much like those original virtual pet toys, you'll start with Digimon in eggs that hatch into small, baby creatures. As in-game time passes, those creatures will digivolve, analogous to evolving in Pokémon if you're unfamiliar, meaning they'll turn into stronger forms that are more and more capable in combat as they evolve. The end game of most Digimon racing is to reach a Mega Form, the final stage, but how you care for them impacts the different turns they'll take along the way to that. Their weight, stats, total battles won, how much they like you, and other factors all play a part in meeting different requirements. Additionally, so-called care mistakes, such as not letting your Digimon reach a bathroom when they're in need, are necessary for certain Digivolutions. When you first start playing the game, these requirements are not shared with you in a menu, but as you praise your Digimon for winning battles and training, these requirements do slowly start to fill in, so you can try to aim for specific Digimon. Personally, I find a lot of fun in just going with the flow and getting who I get. Uh, the surprise is part of the fun for me. So that's the basic core gameplay of Digimon World Next Order. Juggling care of your two partners as you roam the land, training them to be stronger so that they can handle more capable threats. All of this is done in accordance with an in-game clock that's constantly marching forward. Well, unless you're in a dialog box or menu. Then time freezes and there's no rush. One real-world second is one in-game minute, and you only have so much time in a day. Thankfully, very rarely is anything of substance time-locked. There's a very loose calendar system consisting of a weekly A and B format, where specific things can happen on either week, and sometimes there will be things like uh, cheaper prices in a store on a Friday. For the most part though, there are no specific time-related stresses tied to the clock outside of how you use the allotted time to care for your Digimon and making as much progress as you can each day. Digimon World's gameplay can sound pretty daunting to those who hate timer gameplay, but trust me, it starts off fairly novel and the game gradually gives you ways to handle the time of day with ease. You'll unlock one-way fast travel fairly early on in the game, and shortly after that, you can start receiving a steady stream of items that instantly warp you back to your home base, both at no cost to the in-game clock. If there's something stressing you out in Next Order, chances are there's an item or mechanic that will help alleviate it, and it feels great to get that relief each time something arrives to take those issues off your mind. The only real thing to note is that Digimon do eventually die after enough time has passed. Without optional upgrades available in the game, most Digimon last a little over a couple weeks of in-game time before dying and being reincarnated as an egg to start the whole cycle over again, usually with higher base stats than their prior hatching as long as they were treated well in their life. This is definitely the thing that will most put people off, 
especially for those used to other monster raising series where your partners are more permanent, but embracing the cycle as a way to try new methods of raising to see new Digimon will let you enjoy this a lot. It's easy to get attached to that really cool Digimon you raised, but there's always the potential to try and get another cool Digimon. Next Order features a little over 200 of them, so there are plenty to see. It does mean you have to spend some time raising Digimon back to being ready to fight relative to your progress in the game, but uh, we'll touch more on that later in the video. Next Order is about more than just raising and battling your Digimon, though, as it's all in service of a main goal. Recruiting specific Digimon to return to Flotia, a city, to provide their services and help pull resources to defeat the big evil bad of the game's narrative. Throughout the different areas in the game, you'll meet specifically marked monsters that all have different requirements to be recruited to Flodia. Some just need to be talked to, some want you to do a fetch quest for them, and some want you to beat them in battle to prove that it's worth their time to join the city. There are dozens of Digimon to bring to the city, and watching Flodia develop from a shack with some tires lying around into a fleshed out, multi-screen string of shops and useful buildings is great. It's a constant marker of your progress and how much you've been able to accomplish. The gym gets flushed out, a restaurant offering stat boost with meals opens up, a stock market appears, fishing holes are dug for you to fish from, an arena to fight opponents in themed battles is made. It made me feel really good to get all of this built in Flodia as I played the game. The story is mostly fluff, and I say that as an overall net positive since it doesn't get in the way of exploring and just playing the game more than it should. The basic gist is that a selectable boy or girl gets sucked into their Digimon virtual pet toy to discover that there's an entire world beyond its basic LCD screen. Certain Digimon are being turned into gigantic evil monsters against their will to rampage, and the digital worlds, uh antivirus, so to speak, isn't cleaning and correcting those forced digivolutions. So it's up to you to set out, figure out what or who is causing this, and to find out why. Now I don't think the story is particularly good, but I also don't think that that matters that much. It's pretty standard stuff, but it does occasionally bring up some topics that I found interesting. Um, spoiler alert, I guess, but one of the other humans sucked into the digital world, Kota, makes a lot of mistakes raising his very deep-voiced partner. My name is Yukimura. In the hopes to defeat the game's villain, which culminates in his Digimon growing more and more tired and injured as it goes. Eventually, it just flat out dies and is reincarnated as an egg, and a couple characters confront Kota about his mistakes. He talks about how he goes through his day-to-day -day aimlessly, not really feeling like he's particularly good at anything, and just kind of vapidly going through the motions. I've definitely been there, so I was surprised to see this come up as his reason for leaning so hard into brutally training his Digimon. I was pretty interested to see where this would go, but the game just kinda seems to forget about this, as very soon after, his partner has hatched and digivolved most of the way back to the form it was before all of this with no fanfare. No one really mentions that. These things aren't really touched upon afterward, which struck me as a huge missed opportunity to try to give some great advice or hope to those who have been in those shoes in real life. It's indicative of how messy the characters and story can be at times though, if you care to take a moment to actually look at it. One of the reasons I was hugely excited for Next Order before release is that the character you played as in the original game was part of this one, called Mameo here. Mameo actually gets a fair bit of screen time and is generally written as a cool, capable dude which felt respectful, but the fact that he's also been sucked into the digital world like these other humans have before is barely touched upon. Similarly to dropping the ball with Kota's plot point, it feels like a missed opportunity to do such a nostalgic deep pull, and they barely take advantage of that past history. The one time Next Order does do that is a time I don't want to spoil, but let's just say it calls back to the events of the first game as part of a major plot revelation here, but doesn't explain it at all for newcomers, and for those who even know what's going on like me, the way it's handled is so vague 
that you have to wonder why they even bothered. If you've played it, you, you know what I mean, but uh, this is just bare heads up for the rest of you. If you don't know the events of the original game, don't be afraid to pull up a wiki and give it a read through. It'll be quick. Those few quick hits exemplify my issue with the game's story. It's there, and it's cool that they do some of the things they do, but it's done in such a way that I can't help but wonder why they got so close to doing something interesting and then just kinda didn't. It's nothing actively bad, and I did endear myself to some of the characters by the end. It's just very mediocre. No big deal, but I just kinda hoped for more. Kinda like the story, the game design can feel uneven at times too. Most of the areas you explore are pretty basic environments with very simplistic map layouts. There's not really anything intricate here, it's a lot of wide, open, straight runways with the occasional branch to go to different areas. The original game got away with this a lot more due to being a top-down pre-rendered game, but when you can fully move the camera and have a map you can bring up at any time, it's a lot harder to hide. A good bit of this is probably due to the fact that this was a fairly low-budget beta game initially, and if you've been looking at this game's visuals and thinking, eh, that doesn't look so hot, hey, it's quite a step up from its original incarnation. The PS4 version even specifically adds some environmental details that, to me, make up a lot of what I find iconic in Digimon. Environments littered with weird technological doodads, odds and ends, and, of course, vending machines and restrooms thrown about for you to peruse. It's fairly standard, but it's always at least pleasant to look at and very easy to navigate around within. There is one game area that's more complex than the rest, effectively being a giant spiral, and it takes a laughably long portion of your in-game day just to try to navigate it, so maybe that's another good reason for this game's levels to be so basic too. It'd just be too time-consuming otherwise. Unless the rate at which time passed was slowed down, but um, it is what it is here, folks. And so far, I've described things in either matter-of-fact ways or in ways that don't give the game a lot of praise, and I want to emphasize that just raising a couple of cool Digimon and exploring around is still pretty engaging, at least to me. A few little things were added to help incentivize heading back out each and every day, such as scavenging for materials at specific locations that can upgrade Fodia's facilities, or to gain experience to level up my character and get points for my skill tree. Perks like a bigger inventory, better happiness bonuses when tending to your Digimon's needs, and better stat boost at Fodia's gym were just a few things that kept me actively playing even when my Digimon had reincarnated and needed to be trained again to help progress further in the game's story. So to circle back to this point that I mentioned earlier, it's important for me to explain a bit of why I was so bummed out with this game a few years back. See, when your Digimon turn back into eggs, so long as you treated them well, they do inherit some of the stat gains they earned throughout their prior life cycle. But you still have to spend some time bringing them back to around the stats they had before so that you don't get clobbered by enemies from the point in the game you left off at. Your Digimon gains stats from training in the gym and as a battle reward from each fight they get into. This is where I made the vital mistake that left me with a bad impression of this game last time. See, to help incentivize you to not just train against the same enemies over and over, as your Digimon gets stronger and digivolves up the chain, weaker enemies eventually give minimal stat gains. A little over 20 points in each stat is usually an ideal stat gain spread for a fight, but eventually your Digimon gets so strong that the game only gives a mere point, or sometimes zero points, to tell you it's time to move on to find new enemies. I applied this lesson poorly and went to where I was stuck at in the game to try to grind there, only to see that my Digimon were barely making a dent in that area's Digimon. So I said to myself, well, there is the gym back in the city. It can be upgraded and each of the six different training machines inside can be upgraded, so that must mean that's where they want me to focus my time at. Training at the gym focuses on one of a Digimon's six stats at a time, takes an hour of in-game time to do, and raises a Digimon's fatigue meter. Whereas, with effective battle grinding, you can raise all six stats at once, the fatigue barely rises, and it takes no in-game time at all to do a battle. Just your real-world time. So I was training my Digimon to the bone in the gym, broken up by occasional one-hour rest breaks to lower their fatigue levels, wondering why I was hitting a dead end in progressing in this game. 
It turns out that knowing the right spots to battle in makes the game a total breeze and much, much more enjoyable. A few years ago, I was wondering why the game was balanced so badly, and it was honestly totally bumming me out. I, I spent so many years wanting a sequel to that first Digimon World game, and to finally get one in English only to perceive it as so badly made was deeply disappointing. I made my review saying as much, and a few people in the comments kindly told me that I was training wrong and that battles were where it was at. It took me a long time to take their advice and give the game another go, but I'm glad I did. I know I kind of just dumped a lot of game-specific information there, but if you're looking to give this game a chance, it's essentially vital that you look up ideal grinding spots for your Digimon, as it really does solve the main issue I had with Digimon World Next Order. Now, there are instances where putting some time into the gym makes sense, so again, I'll urge that you search around for tips and guides from those very familiar with the game, as it'll be extremely helpful in your playthrough. I wish the game had more directly told me the most efficient way to train my Digimon, but I guess it could also be argued that the signs were in front of me and I took away the wrong lessons, so maybe we both could have done better. And while I'm here warning you how not to play the game, when the game asks if you want to play on easy or normal mode, pick easy. Normal mode is not a higher difficulty mode in a traditional sense, it merely lowers the stat gains you get and makes your Digimon age faster. Between raising your Digimon up from scratch a few times over and the game already being about 50 hours or so to get to the credits of, it's hard to suggest normal and causing yourself more grind. I mean, hey, maybe you wind up loving this game and want that challenge. There's a hard mode unlocked after the credits just for you, but I found easy to be the way to go here. And if it helps, easy mode in this version was normal in the Japanese version. But I kind of buried the lead there though. It took me between 50 and 60 hours to hit the credits in Digimon World Next Order, which I was certain I'd never do after falling out with the game half a decade ago. I was convinced I'd never enjoy it, and honestly, it had kind of made me fall out of passion with Digimon as a series entirely. It's not that I disliked it anymore, I was just weirdly disillusioned, I guess. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not saying it was right or sensible. <laughs> Honestly, I made that crappy video thinking it would get 100 views tops. Naturally, that meant the review sat on the top of search results for the game and it gradually hit like 100,000 views. Anytime this game goes on sale, I get a few hundred views from people wondering if it's worth tossing a few bucks at to check out. I don't entirely think how I felt was completely unwarranted back then, but as someone who grew up with Digimon, I do feel bad about potentially putting people off of a game or the series entirely. This series has always had a bit of a struggling underdog vibe and I just don't like to think that I maybe played a tiny part in harming things. I also always felt like it'd be weak to just make that video private since I'm kind of hiding what I said after whatever potential harm there was had been done. So I wanted to make this video to say, hey, my feelings have changed and I don't fully stand behind that video anymore. Digimon World Next Order isn't some misunderstood masterpiece that I, I just couldn't see the light on, but coming back to it over the past few weeks, I really enjoyed coming back to the game and the series at large. I forgot how much I loved all of these strange monsters, and I was almost always having fun raising them and seeking out dozens of them to come back, join the city, and make the operation grow. It's rewarding to train them, watch them learn new moves, and command them in these vaguely real-time battles. It's still menu-driven, and by using points earned through encouraging your Digimon in battle, you can give specific orders to your partners, but for the most part, they act on their own according to their stats. Battles you win are due in part to a sense of trust you're placing in them after giving them the capability to battle well. The only games like Digimon World Next Order I've ever seen are the other two proper Digimon World games. The first one in the Japan-only PSP 3DS entry. So if what you've seen looks remotely interesting to you, next time the game goes on sale for a few bucks, I think it's worth grabbing and poking at. Even if you don't wind up liking it, you can at least walk away having had a pretty unique game experience, and I think there's value in that. Next Order went from being my least favorite Digimon game to one of my favorites. Like I said, it's gotten me back into Digimon in a big way. The virtual pet I showed earlier is one I actually bought after playing Next Order. I've never owned one of these before, and I'm really enjoying it too. So I'm glad I gave the game another chance. If you do play the game after watching this video, come back later and let me know how you wind up feeling about it. If you've already played it, hey, 
I'm curious to know what you thought too. As for me, I want to go recruit even more Digimon for my city, so I'm going to go focus on that for a bit. After I thank my patrons, thank you patrons, and thank you to Adrian, Buckles Chucklo, Daniel, Goldstorm07, Harry, James Boss, Jeet, Joey, Lewis Jones, Starkiller926, Svendelica, That Trav Guy, and The Crazy Even. <laughs> 